Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this press conference from the 47th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. Uh, thank you for being here in the room. Thank you for watching on our live stream and on Facebook, and a particular uh, hearty welcome to our fellow panelists here today. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, we gave this press conference quite a strong title, as you've seen, Are We Losing the Fight for Human Health? Um, it sounds a bit alarmistic, uh, but you'll hear in a second uh, from the panelists why it is something that we have to take very, very seriously. Um, but without giving anything away, there is a silver lining. There are things being done. And uh, in particular, uh, we'll hear about one uh, initiative that is being launched here today at the press conference. Let me quickly introduce to you um, my fellow panelists, um, also for the sake um, of our online uh, audience here. Um, to my immediate left, uh, I'm joined by Kara Adams, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Union for International Cancer Control, UICC, as most of you uh, know it. Next to him, we're joined by Ian C. Reed, the Chairman and CEO of Pfizer. Um, in the middle of the uh, panel right there is uh, Tim Evans, who's the Senior Director of the Global Practice for Health, Nutrition and uh, Population at the World Bank. And last but definitely not least, uh, we're joined by Elizabeth Cousins. She's the Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the United Nations Foundation. Little bit of housekeeping. Elizabeth has to leave us early. You know everybody has a tight schedule here in Davos. So apologies for that, uh, but we'll definitely hear from her. Let's start though with you, Ian. The initiative we're launching today is uh, named Access Accelerated. What is the initiative about? Please okay, share with let us. Me talk a little bit about the initiative and the reason for the initiative. It's an initiative spearheaded through IFPMA and has brought together 22 pharmaceutical companies based on a shared vision of a future where no one dies prematurely from treatable, preventable diseases. Before going into more detail, I'd like to point out this is an area of global health concern for society and our industry is the, uh, the fact that it's the large and growing burden of non-communicable diseases. We know that according to the World Health Organization, NCDs, cardiovascular disease, cancer, chronic respiratory diseases, diabetes, are responsible for the largest percentage of global morbidity and mortality, 38 million deaths a year. What is not so well known is that 80% of NCDs-related deaths take place in low and middle income countries. This is a tidal wave that is attacking the, the health of these countries and we looking at this as an industry and with partners believe this is the time for a major initiative for you know access accelerated so our goal with access accelerated is to help achieve the UN sustainable development goals and in particular the target to reduce premature deaths from NCDs by one-third by 2030 by working together with we will better understand the full range of access barriers that will help us enhance our support for current efforts and create new initiatives. All the companies involved are committed to doing more individually on top of roughly 100 programs we already do in, in, in the area of NCDs, and we're putting a common framework in place to measure the impact of our work. The Boston uh, University School of Public Health is developing and managing the metrics, and we're establishing pilot programs with partners who are here today as we aim to overcome barriers to care. So um, the World Bank Group will identify solutions to financing, regulatory and service delivery barriers and conduct pilots in primary care in several countries. The first, uh, the first country will be in Africa. And through our support of UICC, you know, um, City Cancer, Ch City Cancer, Challenge, Cancer Challenge, we will support the work to improve cancer treatment and care in cities where more than one million people live. So while we're starting with cancer, we will expand to organizations that work across major NCDs. We believe that through this partnership, we can begin to build strong healthcare systems that will enable us to sustainably improve, ac sustainably improve access to medicines and vaccines, advantage the use of innovative technologies, and make better progress to reduce NCDFs. NCD. With that, I'll hand it back to you. Thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. Elizabeth, we have no time to lose, so let's <laughs> get right to it. Um, at the UN Foundation, you're obviously working with a lot of partners. You've also been intricately involved in the negotiations of the SEGs. Hence my question to you, this type of partnership, what's, 
what's different here and how will it help to achieve the SDGs? Well, thank you very much and good morning to everybody. And the truest thing you just said is we have no time to lose because 2030 is around the corner and there is a lot to do before we get there. Um, so I want to congratulate, first of all, all of the industry leaders who have been part of the Access Accelerated Initiative. This is really quite an extraordinary model of exactly how the sustainable development goals are supposed to work. You know, there are 17 goals and 169 targets. And this initiative responds to the call of one of these, calling for a reduction in premature deaths from non-communicable diseases by one-third by 2030, as you've just said. Partnerships like the Access Accelerated Initiative that bring industry leaders together behind a common purpose will be essential to achieving that objective. You know, the targets in the Sustainable Development Goals are all what you could call stretch targets. They're all achievable, but they all require us to stretch beyond business as usual to change how we think, how we operate, and how we collaborate. And this initiative is not business as usual. It's the kind of new partnership model that we need. You know, partnerships across sectors have recently gotten a fair amount of attention, but partnerships within industries and within sectors are relatively newer. They're much less common, but they have enormous potential to catalyze progress. And seeing what industry leaders are doing in this case, working together to tackle the world's largest killer, non-communicable diseases, and especially to target those who have the least access to life-saving medicines and treatments, um, is not just the right thing to do, it's actually also smart economics. Um, I just want to mention something that many of you will be hearing about this week in Davos, new research from a different set of industry leaders who are part of the Business and Sustainable Development Commission who show that pursuing sustainable market hotspots, as they call it, in just four areas, energy, cities, food and agriculture, and health, can generate at least $12 trillion in new business value by 2030 and create up to 400 million new jobs. That's an extraordinary prize, and it's also doing good while doing well. So just the last point I would make in this, uh, in this context is to say that tackling the toll of NCDs one target among 169, but such a fundamentally important target, goes way beyond health because it really goes to the underpinning of the healthy societies and economies that we're all striving for. So again, I want to congratulate everybody on the importance of this initiative and look forward to seeing it uh, move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Kerry, over to you. We launched yesterday here the Kansas, uh, Kansas City Challenge. Um, and I understand you're one of the first partners uh, partnering with Access Accelerated, partnering with Pfizer here. Um, why is that? Why have you taken the, the step? What convinced you to be a partner? Oh, well, let me just echo what Elizabeth just said, um, which is that the SDGs actually, yes, there's the health goal under goal number three, and which lists uh, a number of challenges which society has, including the addressing of, of cancer and the non-communicable diseases. It also talks about cities under SDG number 11, and it talks about partnership under SDG 17. And UICC, when it was formulating its City Cancer Challenge 2025, which we launched yesterday, understood that in order to address cancer in low middle income countries, we need to bring together a collaboration, a partnership, and focus our attention in the areas or the regions where we can have most impact. And it's pleasing to hear Elizabeth report that others consider that working at city level is a great way to start to improve the, the, the health of a country, but we can start at the city level. What's so exciting about Access Accelerated, as Ian quite rightly said, is it's bringing together 22 companies in a sector who are sharing an ambition to make a difference in those target regions around the world where access to medicines, access to technology, access to human resources is so weak and poor that in truth, unless we address the underpinning framework, the health systems themselves, to put in place pathology, imaging, diagnostics, palliative care, etc., we really are not going to be able to give them the value and the benefit of the immense innovation which has taken place across many industry sectors in the last 10, 20 years. So our ambition is to work with Access Accelerated and other partners in other sectors, including the radiotherapy industry, the imaging and diagnostics industry, and all the cancer organizations committed to help those countries to improve the, the way in which we treat cancer in future, report back to the SDGs that we, as a collaborative partnership, have made a difference in those parts of the world that really do need international support. Thank you, Kerry. And Tim, the World Bank Group is, is working with a lot of governments around the world is, uh, on the local work, on what happens on the ground. Can you share with us 
Um, in, in your experience, when is, it, when is a government ready to take action on, on the question uh, of NCDs? Right. Well, um, generalizing, um, there are really sort of four key areas that we find are absolutely fundamental to um, increasing access uh, for treatment to uh, uh, NCDs. Uh, and I call them four M's. The first is money. And as a banker, uh, you wouldn't be surprised we talk about money. Uh, but first, it's make clear that this is a, a, an investment that has a very positive return, uh, not only in health, uh, but to the economy overall. So uh, we have to continue to make that case. But the second is that we need to change the way we're financing systems so that we're not taxing poor patients when they're ill mm. by making them pay out of pocket, but moving to prepayment systems which give them access to care and allow us to organize rational approaches to service, um, which is fundamental. So that's money. Second is management. And I'm picking up on Kerry's points here. Uh, if you don't have good systems, intelligent systems that can figure out not only access, but equitable access to vulnerable populations, disadvantaged populations with quality, then we're not going to achieve uh, what we need to. But the third M is measurement. And if you don't measure what you're doing, then you can't manage it. And we really need to have very clear time-bound targets. We need to have those real-time information systems that are allowing us to know whether, in fact, uh, we're making the progress that we do, uh, that we need to. And then finally, the last M is mobilization. And that's the recognition that this is not any single institution's agenda. This is something that all partners have a role in. This is multi-sectoral. This is public-private. Um, this is local-global. Uh, and so that mobilization is absolutely fundamental because uh, 14 years uh, or 13 years now is a very short time relative to the ambition of this initiative. So we really have to uh, start moving right now. Mm. And Tim, if, if you're going through the Congress Center here, we have about between 40 and 50 heads of states and government uh, here. Are you in your mind get going and saying, okay, he's taking three M's, she's taking two M's, or uh, would, you, would you say the awareness is there? I think it is, and I'm, I'm a big promoter of M&Ms. So, uh, <laughs> so I, 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 we, we really need to make this uh, viral uh, um, and, and have this go viral, but I think uh, that, that leadership of head of state is fundamental, but it's leadership, 21st leadership, which says it's not government alone. It's government with civil society, private sector that can actually make this change um, uh, achieve scale with quality. Thank you. Ian, let, let me come back to you. Um, that was 2017. Let's say we meet next year again here at this place, and I'll ask you how many organizations. you. I think you mentioned 22 have joined already. Um, how many are we talking about next year? Well, we expect to get more than 22, but I think initially what we're focused on is ensuring that individual companies in that coalition uh, have more programs focused on the NCDs, both treatment and care. Today we have about 100 programs, but we expect that to expand. Uh, that the UICC and the World Bank Group partnerships will be underway with selected city and country works. And we'll have defined a set of metrics to measure our progress and we'll begin to report out what we're learning. We are using Boston University to do that, and this is going to be rigorous. And, and so I'm looking forward to coming back in a year and saying, this let's, is the progress Let's look made. at the data. Yeah. Let's look at the data. I think that's a, that's a great idea. Um, this, please, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it's worth emphasizing we are moving into a new paradigm. We've had a lot of U UN resolutions um, over the last six, seven years since 2011 calling on a multi-sectoral approach to the issue of NCDs, recognizing that most NCDs require a, a range of medical interventions. There's the issue of risk factors, addressing tobacco control, um, obesity, physical activity. You have um, viruses that cause NCDs. So there's a, it's a very complicated beast. And the UN system, through member states, have called on a multi-sectoral approach. And I think, to be fair, we've struggled to respond to that, we've, it, to find a way of bringing cohesion between private, public and civil society has been difficult. <clears throat> but I think what you've seen in the last 24 hours is certainly on the NCD side, a number of organisations like my own, 
um, the Access Accelerated and others hopefully recognising that we can work in common on an ambition to make things better around the world and we can manage the conflict of interest inherent in that ambition. And that's a grown-up path to achieving those SDGs. So I think we are going to be learning, in, use the word learning, we call our learning cities learning cities. Reason being that we as, a, as an organisation and with our partners are doing things we have never done before, working with governments and city leaders. So there will be a period of time over the next two years where we'll work with likes of Cali, Yangon and Asuncion and other cities to learn with them the best way to help them address the challenge that they are facing. Yeah. And you know, as we learn, as we expand, as the pilots uh, go forward, We'll be looking for other parts of society to join in. You know, we, we realize this is a huge task. And the 22 pharmaceutical companies and, and UICC and the World Bank are important, but eventually we need to get in major corporations that work in these countries. They have a vested interest in the, in the health in those countries to participate in this activity. And that's, that's, that's how we'll make it powerful. Mm -hmm. Just add to that, I think, on the learning front, um, you know, we're, we're interested in learning at scale. We want to see system-wide benefits. And so these pilots are, are not really startups, they're scale-ups. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an important point. Let's see if we have any questions from the room. We have a microphone here. Um, so can I see a show of hands if you have any questions? I know the first question always is, uh, takes, uh, takes a moment to show up. It's like the teacher asking for the homework. <laughs> no. Well, it seems like you, you've answered everything to, uh, to everybody's happiness. Um, then it's uh, my task to conclude this press conference. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, thank you for joining us in the room, and thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much.